are usually and more amped than the device I'm going to talk about. Not today. Two thousand five hundred and sixty. That many amps, some of SPM system can push through its guts. That's a lot of amps, and you might be thinking, well, what can you really control with this? Hi guys, it's Matt, and we are talking today about Sonoff SPM. Now, SPM, it's a Sonoff power meter control unit module that comes with a control unit and the relay array. Now, this is a four channel relay that I hold in the hands, and each channel uh, can uh, carry up to 20 amp. So if you're supplying a voltage in a range of 240 volts, it's what you've got in UK, then you can expect in excess of 4,000 watts per channel. But you're probably wondering where the 2,560 amps comes from. Now, a single control unit, the main unit like this, can connect to 32 uh, four channel relays for the total of 128 individual channels for 20 amps each, which obviously equals to 2560. So the mystery is solved. So let's talk about these in details because they're quite interesting. Now, from the form factor, you might be thinking that they meant to replace your devices in a fuse box. And you couldn't be further away from the truth because this is not our uh, CD device, so it's not going to protect your circuit, even though it has over voltage and over current protection. So what is it exactly? Well, it's a, an industrial take on 4CH and 4CH Pro series, a relay with a built-in power meter that aims to control objects probably larger than your typical home. We are speaking about maybe factories or even shopping centers. So let's draw our attention first to the main unit. Now, the main unit works over Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz, no surprises there, this is a Sonoff device, but it also has a Ethernet, so if you're in favor of a, a Ethernet cable, you can just plug the cable in and have it wired. Very nice. Now, the device is also DIN mountable, and it has a couple of blanked out connectors, places. There's nothing in the PCB, but uh, looking at uh, the shape of the connectors, you would think that you can add more than one Ethernet port, maybe in the future, and, well, HDMI? Anyway, back on track. Apart from the button, you're also gonna see the SD card slot, we're gonna touch on that a little bit later, and a two-wire connector, which is used for RS-485 protocol which in fact highlights the industrial orientation of this device. Pairing this unit is very simple. Open EvoLink app and use Bluetooth menu, which indicates that inside we have an ESP32 device. So let's open this up and see what's inside. Inside we have two PCBs. One is just a I.O., so it's gonna support the connector for RS-485 and the button, but the main PCB, as I expected, has ESP32 on board. There is also a battery which indicates RTC support, real-time clock. It's not, however, a separate IC. The real-time support is integrated in a controller that is responsible for handling LAN connector. Other than that, it is a son of device, so we have some dev parts exposed and all the familiar parts are here. So we have a ground, TX and RX, also 3.3 volts if you want to connect it via header. In addition to that, we also have a GPIO 00 exposed, so flashing this baby is gonna be very easy. Let's close this baby up and let's look at the relays itself. Because these relays can handle up to 20 amp each, even connectors are quite sturdy and they big and you shouldn't have any problems connecting your wires. Now, on the outside, what you get is four different buttons to actually control all the 
uh, relays individually, so you can use the buttons to toggle them, and the connector for RS-485. Now, actually two connectors because ideally you're gonna be daisy linking them together up to one uh, up to 32 devices for a total of 128 channels. Uh, just note that the next to the connector is a small toggle switch which should be set to a on or off position depending whether your unit is uh, in the chain itself or is a last unit in a chain. So if you only have a one, you have to toggle it to a specific position to make it work. Inside the SPM relay, you'll find 20 amp relays for each channel. So that's definitely can handle that 20 amps, right? And just like they did in a 4CH and 4CH Pro series, current clamps are handling the power measurement. So all looking good in here. The device is actually split into two boards, one for the uh, interface that uh, it's uh, interfacing with RS-485 and the actual PCB that handles the connectors and handles the relays with current clamps. So what is it like in use? To start up, you have to connect both units to mains. Otherwise, the, the slave device is not going to be visible. As each individual relay array is connected via RS-485, and there is a cable included to make that link. The cable is quite short, however, uh, you can use the cable which is up to 100 meter long between individual devices, which means you can really expand that to a massive network. When both devices are connected, and please excuse my wiring in here because I only did that for testing purposes, in ideal circumstances you want individual channels to be connected to different circuits, uh, then all you have to do is just press the button once to pair the sub-devices and they will appear in the EWLink app as a sub-devices alongside the main control unit. Just one thing to note here, if you remove the cable connecting the main unit with the relay, you probably will have to pair the unit again and that unit's gonna be added back to EWLink app as a fresh new sub-device erasing your named channels. So if you were spending extra time naming those channels and then disconnected the wires, you will have to go through this again. I can see this being very frustrating if you have several devices linked together already, especially if the Google Home or Alexa support is already integrated and all those names gonna get wiped. I would also appreciate if I did, guys, actually made it possible to only add several of them instead of just dumping entire um, device list from EWLink app into relevant skills because, well, let's face it, if you have 128 different channels and you enable that skills, you'll be browsing there forever trying to identify them all. Once the sub-device is detected, it's pretty much the same as using 4CH Pro with power measurements of a current and over voltage protections, timers and additional settings. But unlike the 4CH Pro, Sonoff SPM comes with built-in Sonoff DIY, which is up until now really available on only three devices. If you never used Sonoff DIY, I have a video on that subject in there, but in short, it's a protocol that allows you to use the rest to interact with some of devices directly. That way you don't have to rely on cloud and you can bring those devices to, for example, Node-RED and start using HTTP posts to uh, switch different settings and retrieve the data. To start using DIY mode, first pair your device with EWLink app. Without that step, I had actually problems uh, triggering this. Once the device is paired, take a note of the device ID. You're going to need that for later on. When you're ready, press and hold the button for five seconds to enter DIY pairing mode and connect the Ethernet cable. Don't worry, you'll be able to operate the son of device in a DIY mode over Wi-Fi, but during the setup, you will need to link it via Ethernet. So once you've done that, then locate your new Sonoff uh, using maybe a finger app or something similar and then navigate to that page. It'll give you a Wi-Fi configuration page. That way you'll be able to connect it to your Wi-Fi and start interacting with it. Sonoff DIY mode went through a couple of iterations and it's pretty well explained on their documentation, but I'll walk you through a couple of steps. First step is to use the device ID to receive sub-device ID. We can do it by sending HTTP 
REST request, that's a POST request to the device itself, to the port 8081. That's a default port, by the way. All the requests have to be JSON formatted, so uh, we'll have to format our uh, request and enter our device ID that I asked you to grab earlier. Once you submit that, you'll receive sub-device ID, which you can use then alongside the device ID to control and receive data from specific sub-devices. Obviously, if you have a more than one relay, you'll have a more than one sub-device ID to control. I've also included a sample on how to pass a command to turn all the relays on using a web request or HTTP request. So if you're interested, I'll link all of those examples in an article uh, in the description of this video. The same protocol applies when changing settings or receiving information about power usage. And this is where that micro SD card slot comes in handy. With support up to 32 gigs cards, you'll be able to store up to 180 days of power usage history and query that history using HTTP calls from Son of DIY. So that way you don't actually have to deploy your own database or cloud to store all that data sent from the Sonoff device. But if you're interested in data up to 180 days, that will be conveniently stored and served to you from the SD card itself. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm really struggling to find use cases for these devices for home automation. I mean, unless you're running a farm or a small business, the only opportunity for me would be to connect these in line with my fuse box to get all the power information to my home automation. I mean, it's an awesome way of using it, but oh, they just feel like an overkill, even though they are quite reasonably priced with the control unit being priced around $30 and the relay unit being priced around $60 each. So if you're interested in the description of this video, you're going to find the links to the products itself and the article where I included the sample flows if you want to give a Son of DIY a go. Do let me know in the comments section how would you use these devices in your home automation because I'm really really curious how would you take advantage of 20 apps per channel and 128 channels maximum. As for now guys, I do not have a posting schedule so you know what's gonna happen. I'll tell you that, well, YouTube is hit and miss with comments, especially if you want to put some links in. Contact me via social media if that's the case. And also follow me on any given social media of your choice because this is the best way to get quick updates about what am I up to and what's coming up to the channel. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.